Hi, this is Chris, and here we are going to finish up section three of practice test three with questions 19 and 20, our last couple of grid ins here. So on question 19, it says at a lunch stand, each hamburger has 50 more calories than each order of fries. If two hamburgers and three orders of fries have a total of 1,700 calories, how many calories does a hamburger have? So we're going to have to write our own equations here because they don't give us any. But there are two variables in place. We don't know how many calories hamburgers have, and we don't know how many calories the fries have. But they tell us relationships between these two, which that should be whenever we have two variables in place, we should automatically be thinking to ourselves, system of equations. There's going to have to be more than one equation that we come up with to be able to solve for the two variables. And the rule for that, you have to have n distinct linear equations to solve for n distinct variables. But a more layman's term way of saying it is however many variables you have to solve for, that's how many different equations you got to come up with. So let's see if we can come up with an equation from this first sentence. Each hamburger, so h, has 50 more than the fries, or f plus 50. h would be equivalent to f plus 50. If you add on 50 calories to the fries, that would tell you how many calories the hamburger has. So that's one equation. Now let's see if we can come up with a second equation from that second statement. It says if two hamburgers and three fries, so 2h and 3f, have a total of 1,700. OK. So I'm at a good place here. I have my two equations. And now what's next? <clears throat> well, whenever you have a system of equations, you can solve by elimination or substitution. And on SAT, typically speaking, elimination is going to be preferred. It's going to make your math a little bit easier and allow you to get to the correct answer a little bit more directly. However, that's not always the case. And this is one of those questions where that might not be the case because they already have one of the variables isolated. And if they've already isolated a variable, then it makes it easy for us to use substitution because we can plug that expression, f plus 50, we can plug that in in place of h the way that it's already set up. So we don't have to do extra steps to do it. Here, you can do 2 times f plus 50 plus 3f equals 1700, and then distribute, combine like terms, and solve. Now, if you wanted to switch things around prior to this, that's OK. If you wanted to then isolate f instead and plug in by getting f equals h minus 50 and plug in instead for the f, that's OK. And that's actually a great way to do it, because then you have everything left in terms of h. And that's what they're asking for. They want that value of h. But the most direct way to do it, and what most people naturally are inclined to do first, is to plug in the f plus 50 in place of h. So that's the way we're going to write it out here. We combine the 2f and the 3f. We get 5f. We subtract the 100 from both sides. We get 1,600 f would equal 1600 divided by 5 would be 320. And remember, still got to plug that back in. 320 plus 50 would give you a value for h of 370. Now, one other thing to keep in mind is that even though this is a grid in question, you don't have answer choices that you can use to come up with a guess. When they have SAT word problems, the actual values will be at least what we call realistic. They'll have the appearance of reality. So we don't have to be a nutrition expert to know the average calorie count of every hamburger in the world. But if you did happen to have a ballpark idea, then that's the type of number you would want to come up with as a guess. So if they say, how many calories does a hamburger have, then you don't want to guess three because that's likely not very realistic. You don't want to guess 9,999. That's likely not very realistic. So even if you were unsure of the math, keep in mind SAT word problems are going to give you realistic values as your results. And sometimes you can use that to your advantage to come up with a pretty decent guess. 
Up next, we'll take a look at question 20. In triangle ABC, the measure of angle B is 90 degrees. BC is 16, AC is 20. Okay, whoa, it's a lot of information right there. And when you see a question that gives you a lot of information, instead of continuing to read on and get lost in the shuffle of all the information they're giving you, it's sometimes helpful to see if you can start depicting that information in a little bit more clear fashion. So here we have a triangle and angle B is 90 degrees. So we'll put a 90 degree angle. We'll label that B. It tells the triangle is A, B, C. B, C is 16. All right. A, C is 20. And if you recognize this, this is one of your triplets. This is a three, four, five triplet that has been expanded. But even if you didn't recognize it and you needed to use Pythagorean theorem, you can. So here to use Pythagorean theorem, you would do x squared plus 16 squared equals 20 squared. And that would give you x squared plus 256 equals 400. Subtract that, x squared would equal 144. And this missing side over here would be 12. The reason it's helpful to know our triplets is because on a question like this, this happens to show up in a no calculator section. And some of this math, if you have to do 16 squared or 20 squared or subtract 400 minus 256 to get 144, some of that math is not that easy to do in our heads. And it might take us a while if we have to write it out. So by memorizing the triplets and some of their expansions, and we can see here, this is like the same thing as saying, if I were to zoom in, this is like a three, four, five. But it's just expanded. Each side is multiplied by four to maintain that same ratio. And so this is a 12, 16, 20. I do recommend knowing that information outright. It's going to save us a lot of time on test day so that we can avoid having to do complex calculations like we see down here. All right, so that's triangle ABC. Now let's see what the rest of the question describes. Triangle DEF is similar. So keyword here, similar. Let's talk about what that means. <clears throat> when they say similar, all that that means is that the angles are going to be the same. It can be bigger, it can be smaller, but each of the angles is going to match up in the order that those points are written in. You want to align them correspondingly. So ABC is similar to DEF, means that D is going to correspond with A, E is going to correspond with B, and F is going to correspond with C. Now, <clears throat> they tell us that each side of triangle DEF is one-third the length of the corresponding side of triangle ABC. So basically what they're saying here is that if you were to divide each of these values by 3, 12 over 3, or one-third of 12 is 4, one-third of 16. Well, that one's kind of messy. It's just going to be 16 over 3. You can leave it as an improper fraction. One-third of 20. It's just going to be 20 over 3. But that would give us the side length of each side of this triangle. So when they say each side is one-third the length, just means multiply by 1 over 3 as a fraction. Or you could think of that the same way as dividing by 3. And now we have the side lengths for triangle DEF. And then lastly, what's the question actually asking us? They want to know the value of sine of f. So this is going to require a little bit of outside knowledge. And for this, I'll actually put this in red to color code it a little bit because it's worth memorizing if we don't already know it. But this is going to be SOHCAHTOA. And that's our acronym to remember that your sine of an angle F in this case is going to be the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So for the sine of F, if we're looking at this angle, the side opposite <coughs> that one will be 4. And the hypotenuse of a right triangle is always the longest side. It's the side across from the 90 degree angle. So that'll be 20 over 3. So here, when we go to solve for sine f, opposite over hypotenuse. Let me move this around a little bit. I'm just going to make this smaller 
and I'm going to put it out of the way down here a tiny bit for now. And I'll also make our Pythagorean theorem a little bit smaller and just get that out of the way altogether. All right, so now we have a little bit more room. And here we can see that your sine of f is going to equal 4 divided by your hypotenuse, which is 20 over 3. And with dividing by a fraction, that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal, or a lot of people like to think of that as keep change flip. You keep the numerator, change the division to multiplication, and you flip the fraction in your denominator. Here, we can cross cancel, and we're going to be left with 3 fifths for that ratio for the sine of f. So again, in that question, key points, key concepts to take away. They do want to make sure that we know definition of similar triangles and that we're able to either memorize our three, four, five right triangles and their expansions or use Pythagorean theorem to come up with the missing side of a triangle. And lastly, to put it all together, we have to know this relationship through Sokotoa to understand that your sine of an angle is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. And that's it for section three. So great job there, and we will...